Hello, Harry Cliff here. A potentially historic result has just come out from a team working with the James Webb Space Telescope who found evidence for carbon-based molecules in the atmosphere of an exoplanet, and crucially, an exoplanet in the habitable zone of its local star. And even more tantalizingly, they say they've potentially found a chemical signature of life. So, have we just found the first evidence of life on another planet? Let's take a look. The study was carried out by a team led by Professor Niku Madhusudan at Cambridge's Institute of Astronomy, just down the road from my office at the Cavendish Laboratory. They've been using the James Webb Space Telescope to study an exoplanet. That's a planet outside our solar system with the catchy title K218b. K218b, 120 light years away in the constellation Leo, is unlike anything we see in our solar system. It weighs in at about 8.6 times the mass of the Earth, placing it between the Earth and the planet Neptune in size. Now, what makes K218b particularly interesting is that it's suspected to be a so-called Haitian world. Now, what does Haitian mean? I hear you cry. Well, Haitian is a portmanteau of hydrogen and ocean, meaning that a Haitian world has a hydrogen-rich atmosphere and a planet-wide ocean below. Haitian worlds have got a lot of attention recently because it's believed their oceans could be habitable at a much wider range of distances from their local star than small, rocky planets like the Earth. And what's more, because they're bigger, they're easier to see with telescopes, which makes them ideal places to look for signs of life outside our solar system. But how do you detect life on a planet that's over 100 light years away? I mean, you can't exactly pop over to have a look. Well, if an exoplanet passes in front of its star, some of the starlight will pass through its atmosphere, where different chemical molecules will absorb characteristic wavelengths of light. Astronomers can then split this light into a spectrum using a spectrograph, and by looking at which wavelengths have been absorbed, they can figure out what chemical molecules are present in the atmosphere of the exoplanet. Now, there are certain molecules that here on Earth we only know to be associated with life. So if you see one of those molecules in the atmosphere, that could be the smoking gun of living organisms on the exoplanet. Now, until recently, it just wasn't possible to do this kind of spectral analysis on K218b. Our telescopes just weren't powerful enough. But now, the mighty James Webb Space Telescope has changed the game. Madhusudan's team trained the James Webb on K218b and watched as it passed in front of its star. And this is the spectrum they got. What we're looking at here is the amount of light blocked by the exoplanet as it passes in front of its star as a function of wavelength. And what's immediately clear from the data is the unmistakable signature of methane. That's the gas that we use in our boilers and for cooking here on Earth. They also saw strong evidence for another carbon-based molecule, carbon dioxide, a gas we're all too familiar with. But it's also interesting to look at what they didn't see. They saw no evidence for either ammonia or for carbon monoxide. And that is particularly exciting because the best explanation for an exoplanet with carbon dioxide and methane in its atmosphere, but no ammonia and no carbon monoxide, is that it is an ocean world. In other words, K218b does indeed appear to be a Haitian world. Now, on its own, the discovery of methane and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of an exoplanet is historic. It's the first time astronomers have seen evidence for carbon-based molecules in the atmosphere of an exoplanet in the habitable zone of its star. But what is potentially even more exciting is the claim that they may have seen evidence for a chemical marker for life. This is a molecule called dimethyl sulfide. Here is its chemical structure. It's a sulfur atom bonded to two carbon hydrogen groups. Now, you may not be very familiar with dimethyl sulfide, but you'll almost certainly have smelt it. It has a characteristic unpleasant odor that we associate with boiled cabbage. So if K218b does indeed have dimethyl sulfide in its atmosphere, it smells vaguely of cabbage. But another place you might have smelt dimethyl sulfide is at the seaside. And that's because this molecule is produced by phytoplankton, tiny living organisms in the ocean. And as far as we know, dimethyl sulfide can only be produced by living things. So you can probably see where I'm going here. Finding dimethyl sulfide on K218b could be the sign of living organisms in its ocean.
The crucial question then is, does the evidence stack up? Well, to figure this out, let's go back and look at the spectrum recorded by James Webb. The signature of dimethyl sulfide appears in that bit of the spectrum between about 3.5 and 4 microns. Now, if you take the data just as it is, then they found about 2.4 sigma evidence for dimethyl sulfide. What does that mean? Well, it means that there is about an 80% chance that the data is explained by the presence of this molecule. However, there is a problem here, and that's because the region where dimethyl sulfide lives in the spectrum is also in the region where two of the sensors of James Webb meet. In other words, one sensor does the lower end of the spectrum and another sensor does the higher end of the spectrum. Now, the team realized that it's probably necessary to introduce an offset between these two sensors, basically to account for the fact they're not equally sensitive. And if you allow for this, then the evidence for dimethyl sulfide basically disappears. So have we seen the first evidence for life on an exoplanet? Probably not, at least not yet. But nonetheless, this is a fantastically important breakthrough. The first discovery of carbon-based molecules in a habitable zone exoplanet, and it gives us a very clear target now to go on and study planets like K218b in more detail. James Webb has only just begun doing these kinds of investigations, so we're going to get loads of more studies like these in the coming years. And by looking at K218b for longer, we may eventually see evidence for life. It's too early to tell, but watch this space. No pun intended. <laughs>